Okay, so um, I'm Aparna. I'm a uh, data scientist at Dow Jones, and um, I'm going to present some work that I've done with Hisham Talukdar. So um, I'm going to talk about some of um, our methods to try and optimize the digital business of the Wall Street Journal. So the Wall Street Journal is known for strong business and economic news, and as a result, we have a very unique subscriber base. And we know that our subscribers are willing to pay for the news because of the rigor and insight produced by our journalists, but it's a very specific audience. Um, and as we're moving towards personalization, we want to try to understand our customers and profile them. So this is a very high level of um, the system we've created to try and understand our customers. So a subscriber comes in, they browse on our digital products, and they leave a digital footprint. Then we try to um, profile them in three different ways, through segmentation, trying to predict if they're going to churn, and their lifetime value, the value that um, we have or they have to us, or we can get from them. Finally, all of this feeds into a web API, and from there we can develop personalized business strategies. So I'm going to go through these three metrics in the center. Okay, so moving towards personalization, the first question we have is who are our customers and who are the, who are the actual readers of the Wall Street Journal? Are there distinct groups of people and do they have very um, different interests? So to do this, we took a three-step approach. It's traditional market research, then some machine learning, and then some experimentation. Um, okay, so the traditional market research side. So we started with surveys, actual surveys to our customers. We surveyed about 2,000 people, and we asked them questions about how they consume the news. And so, of course, these questions were news-related because we're a newspaper, but this could really be applied to any industry and any kind of business. So we asked people questions such as, are they willing to pay for the news? What type of content do they look for? Which brands do they identify with? Et cetera, et cetera, and questions about their lifestyle. Then we looked at the survey responses, and based on over-indexed questions, we were able to def define discrete groups of people. So um, I've listed six of the groups or segments on the slide on the right-hand side. So if we look at the first one, um, some of the discriminating um, survey responses were that the first group said they liked to read their news in print. They were relatively affluent, they were outgoing, and they were leaders in their industry. Um, if we look at the fourth one, these people said they like to read news to advance their careers, they like to adopt new trends, they were in management and leadership. So we came up with kind of trendy, fun names for each of these segments. So the first one we called them print traditionalists, and the fourth one we called them career-driven leaders. Okay, so now we have, we've given surveys to 2,000 of our subscribers and we know which, which segment they belong to, but we have thousands and thousands of subscribers. We don't want to give everybody a survey. Most people don't want to take a survey. So how can we figure out the segment that people belong to? And by figuring out segments, we can move towards personalization. So to do this, um, this is where the machine learning came in. So if we think of the output or the label here as the segment that somebody belongs to, we can go back, we can go back and map their digital footprint. These were our subscribers. So we can say how many times a week or a day did somebody browse the tech section versus the economy section or the business section and use those as features in a model. So we'd have trained a L1 logistic regression model here came up with a pretty good accuracy, and then um, now for every new subscriber who comes to our website, we can predict which segment they fall into. So this was great, we were very excited as data scientists, but how do we convince the rest of the business that our model is actually valid and the segmentation that we've come up with is valid? Okay, so to do this, um, we designed an experiment on the Wall Street Journal back in April of 2015. So um, I'll just sort of give the really quick takeaway here. Um, we designed a footer bar that goes to the bottom of the home page, um, and it promoted three newsletters, three in-house newsletters that one of the segments said they were interested in based on topics they were interested in. So it was um, entrepreneurial news, um, real estate news, and marketing news. We knew that the career-driven leaders liked this type of news, so we just divided divided our population into two groups and said, let's measure how career-driven leaders respond to this target content compared to everybody who's not a career-driven leader. So on the right-hand side of the slide, these are sort of inverse Kaplan-Meier plots. So death in this case is your subscription or life is this your subscription. But what we can see, the takeaway, is that career-driven leaders are actually responding at a much higher rate to the targeted content compared to everybody else. So a few takeaways here. One is that the segmentation is valid. We have a good model. And two, that, um, or third, that niche content can actually be promoted. So it was thought that some of these news newsletters were not of interest to our audience. But when we can find specific groups, we can show that some of these products really are worth keeping around. Okay. 
So um, we've also built other models to try and predict which customers are likely to churn. If we can figure out who's going to churn and end their subscription, we can try to target them with save strategies. Okay, um, I'll sort of keep going quickly. And so finally now we put all of these scores into what we call a customer knowledge engine. And this is a good place to start to um, design targeted strategies and uh, take personalization to another level on the Wall Street Journal. Um, and then a quick, uh, quick way we can use all of this together. So if we think of our general population, that's all the different colored people at the top, let's think of people who are really likely to churn and identify them. And that could be the red group in the middle of the slide. So now we can say, okay, let's give them a campaign or give them an offer and try to keep them around for longer. And let's say we do that and we can save 20% of that population. Well, that's great because before we had the churn model, we would just give this campaign to everybody and it was just, it's a waste of our resources to just throw out campaigns to people who, um, who shouldn't be seeing them. But now if we can bring in the segments, we can say, okay, well, let's, now we have these save strategies. Can we actually personalize them further on an individual or on a segment level? And if we do that, we could see, we could probably say 40%, 30%, 20% by um, breaking that apart by segment and taking that to, taking that on a personal level. So it's, it's a save and it's greater than 20%. And uh, this is uh, currently one of the strategies that our marketing group is using. Okay, and I think I'm out of time, so I'm going to stop there. <laughs>